Neil Bonnet's accomplishments are highlighted by 18 Winston Cup victories in some 360 starts. He won the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte twice, and he won it back-to-back. -back. His first victory, 1977, on the old half-mile at Richmond, Virginia. He was the first driver to win the Bush Clash back-to-back. -to -back. The only other driver to duplicate that feat, the great Dale Earnhardt. Whether it was short tracks or long tracks, Neil Bonnet was always the match of any Winston Cup driver when he cinched up the seatbelt. Ken Squire, I like him. He does nice work. Ha, he's better than Walter. Bobby, tell us about the first time you saw Neil. I guess he was uh, at the end of being a, a teenager, you know, uh, was really a youngster. And um, just wanted to go out there and go racing. And uh, he was involved with some other guys here in town. Was and he about, what, about 18 then? Yeah, I would say he was 18, 19 years old. And mm -hmm. You were about 20? I <laughs> might have been a little bit further down than that, you know. <laughs> what, what about the, uh, there was, I remember talking about the drink box car or Coke machine or something. What kind of? Well, it, the, the, uh, the phrase was really a little bit disrespectful. <laughs> you know, I had the Coke machine. I had Coke sponsorship yeah. back then. And I had the Coke machine. And uh, the uh, term for Neil's car was the drink box, but they didn't really mean drink. They just meant box. <laughs> and uh, kind of referred to his car from... Changed you know, the from front that. of it a little bit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so he had the worst car, huh? Yeah. Um, being that I, that I was considered the boss, I did take the best car yeah. every time I got a chance. Yeah, I would too. What was fun about doing that is Bobby had sat in the office and... Uh, and just like you get offers for personal appearances all the time, they say, can you be in Houston, Texas this week? No, I can't be there, but I'll send Neil Bonnet. And here goes this Neil who. And yeah. Bobby said, get in the truck, go to Houston, Texas. I said, man, I ain't never been out of Alabama. Yeah, go out to Houston, <laughs> unload the car, and so-and-so has won all the races. You try to beat him. Yeah. So I'd go out there and unload the race car. And, you know, at that time, we had good enough equipment. I could go out there and we'd unload, we'd win the race, and I'd leave. And it was really Neil who. Yeah. You know, who was that guy? Yeah. And it got to be like a bunch of renegades yeah. traveling all over the country. I remember you telling me that. And we well, had a lot of fun doing that. When I first met Neil Bonner, you know, he was kind of a snotty nosed little kid out at uh, Birmingham Fairgrounds Speedway. And, you know, I, I didn't know too much about Neil at that time. And uh, I was very careful when I was around him in the race car. Well, Neil, you know, he's, uh, I guess you would call him the fourth member of the Alabama game. It started off, you know, with Bobby Allison and myself, the two original members in it, and then, and then with Donnie. Uh, that started off the Alabama gang was the original three. And as the time went on, uh, Neil Bonin, who was an up-and-coming driver, you know, from the Birmingham area in the limited class, but moved up into our class of racing and uh, become well-known and started doing real good and uh, showed himself as being a championship type of driver that we kind of wanted to add to our gang. So we added Neil to, he was the fourth member of the Alabama gang. Well, after a while, Neil got to win in a few races and uh... I think that was a criteria of getting into the Alabama gang. Uh, Red had won, Bobby had won, I had won. Finally, Neil started winning, so I said, I guess we can, we can take him in the Alabama gang. Neil was a highly competitive guy. You know, he felt like every race he went into, he was going to win. And uh, I remember most about his racing, that he was just like a bulldog. But, you know, harder and longer the race was, the more he played a part in it. He's a very hard driver, you know, uh, uh, he just never give up. In fact, sometimes we thought he drove a little bit too hard, and, uh, but uh, he was just a great guy to work with. Neil was always more uh, concentrating on the car. He was one of the first drivers to understand that a driver had to have the right car. So he was a nuts and bolts type of guy, wanted to make sure that the chassis setup was correct and so forth. But other drivers hadn't learned that yet. Neil was a great race driver. Uh, he drove for me three years, and, and we won races and sat on the pole and stuff like that a lot with Neil. Neil Bonnet was a Junior Johnson driver. He was out of the mold of Bobby Allison and Cale Yarborough, and, and that means he was aggressive, and that means he could be a mean driver. Earnhardt has that streak in him. And yet, when he gets out of that race car, the, I think the word is integrity. That's the word for Neil Bonnet. He has a lot of integrity.